In this final video on plant transport as a whole, we're going to conclude our discussion on long distance transport by entitling this next flowchart Long Distance Transport 5. And here what we'll finally finish our discussion on transport as a whole on is of course the topic of sugar translocation since we've completed water movement, bulk flow specifically, and how do we do sugar translocation? What's the actual mechanism? The actual mechanism follows something known as the pressure flow hypothesis. This hypothesis, the way that we think sugar translocates, moves throughout the plant, is illustrated in figure 36.16, and that's something you should be looking at as we go through the steps. So, in order to do the pressure flow mechanism, the hypothesis of sugar movement, what you have to understand is the following prerequisite. Translocation, the movement of food, in essence, in plants. Translocation of dissolved sugar in phloem, Okay, so we have sugar, it's dissolved in the phloem, has to move some way. And this translocation occurs via something known as a pressure gradient. Now, we've talked about a pressure gradient before. High to low pressure was sort of our rule in our water pressure gradient story. And the same story is going to be applicable here. What is the pressure gradient? Specifically, what is it between? PG for pressure gradient will be between two separate things in order for translocation of dissolved sugar to happen. Um, translocation of dissolved, and you can just insert here, I forgot to write this down, sugar right there. Okay, the dissolved sugar. Okay, this translocation has to be between two separate sources. Two separate, better word would be, let's say, areas. Because one of them is a source. I don't want to say both of them are a source. And the other one is the sink. You need a pressure gradient between the source and the sink. And if we remember our rule, we always go source to the sink. That would mean that our pressure gradient is always the whatever pressure is in the source to whatever pressure is in the sink. I will tell you that at the source where we have an excess amount of sugar, this is going to be where the sugar, because it's in excess, this is where the sugar is loaded into the phloem. That's the key word here, loaded into phloem and phloem is our highway to move around sugar and so I would tell you that in this loading process we establish a high pressure gradient okay we essentially have a high pressure here the sink is going to be the area at which sugar is unloaded so we'll write this down as where sugar is unloaded so we load it at the source and into the phloem, this is where it is unloaded from the phloem. Not into the phloem, but from the phloem. So the phloem provides the sugar to a certain sink that needs to store or metabolize sugar, and thus it is unloaded from the phloem to the sink. Now once we're here, we actually have a low pressure gradient. So what is the pressure gradient that needs to happen? It has to go from a high pressure gradient of sugar to a low pressure gradient of sugar. In essence, in all, we have to go from a source to a sink. That's our driving rule here for the following reasons as stated. So that's our basic premise behind the pressure flow hypothesis. So now that we have this big general idea in place, let's look at the actual mechanism. How does pressure flow hypothesis occur within plants that utilize that sort of way to translocate sugars. So, the first way to look at this mechanism, there are two ideas. We have to look at how the mechanism happens in the source and how it happens in the sink. We know the broad idea, now let's look at the specifics. So, if we are focusing first on the source, we have two ideas to look at. I like to break this up into two sort of events in the source. First, we have to look at the events that are going to occur within the leaf, because the leaf is really a great example of a source, because there's always going to be excess sugar here, because there's always going to be, let's say, sucrose as a specific sugar via photosynthesis. There's going to be tons of photosynthesis happening, thus tons of sugar being produced, thus a potential for high pressure gradient here. So, sucrose via photosynthesis, once you have the sucrose in excess, it's actually going to move into, moves into, things known as companion cells. So these companion cells will play a big role in sugar translocation. Just remember that. 
So we have companion cells. How do we move into the companion cells? Well, we have to undergo active transport because sugar is a pretty big molecule, and that molecule needs to utilize an active transport mechanism. And once we do active transport, we utilize another sort of active transport event in order to load. Why are we loading? Because this is where sugar is loaded, the source. The source is the leaf, and this is where we load into a specific part of the phloem. Now, I'm not just going to say phloem. I'm going to say the part of the phloem that we need to know, which is the sieve tube element of the phloem. S-T-E for sieve tube element of the phloem. That's our first sort of half of the source story. This is how we load our sieve tube element, because it starts at the leaf and ends up at the sieve tube element. Once we're there, we have the second side of the story. I like to consider this step two. Here we have a sieve tube element with a solute concentration, remember the brackets represent concentration, that increases. Okay, the solute concentration increases. How does it increase? Well, it becomes hypertonic to the xylem. The xylem is full of water for the most part, right? And so we have this now phloem full of solute, full of sugar. Thus, this phloem is hypertonic to the xylem. So what's going to happen now? What's going to happen is that the H2O from the sieve tube element is going to go from the xylem, X, to uh, from the, excuse me, this is the H2O from the sieve tube element. Uh, let me rewrite this actually. Messed this up. My bad. Here we go. H2O is going to go into, my bad, the sieve tube element. Why is it going to go into the sieve tube element? Well, that's because it's right next to a xylem. The xylem is going to be where we have the source of the water, the excess water, the hypotonic xylem. So H2O into sieve tube element from the xylem via osmosis. Again, sorry I messed that up, but what we're basically saying is we have a hypertonic phloem and we have a hypotonic xylem. We always go hypo to hyper. Water is going to go into the hypertonic sieve tube element from the hypotonic xylem via osmosis. Okay, hopefully that's clear. So now, once we add water into the sieve tube element, which is already full of this solute, what do we do? We have created, this creates pressure. Specifically, it creates pressure that is high. It creates a high pressure, just like I said right over here, high pressure gradient. This is why it happens, because you get full of this water, full of this solute within the sieve tube element. Essentially, this is going to then do the following. This pushes, this high pressure pushes the sugar solution, because now we also have lots of water in here, pushes the sugar solution to a lower pressure. Why do we want to go to a lower pressure? Well, that's one of the rules that we established in our beginning of this flow chart, right over here. High pressure to low pressure. That's what we're going to do. Push sugar solution to lower pressure. Where is that lower pressure? That lower pressure is not in the source, but now we have to move to the other side of the mechanism in the sink. So the sink is always going to be the point at which we are going to have lots of unloading. Okay, so here what's going to happen is the following. The sugar moves out of the sieve tube element, S-T-E for sieve tube element, into the sink cell, whatever that sink cell may be. Could be a root, probably a root, uh, because that's where a lot of storage happens, right? And sinks are for storage and metabolism. Sugar moves out of sieve tube element into sink cell via active transport active transport. Okay, so that's our next step. Once that has happened, I want to sort of reiterate an idea of psi value of water potential to really drive home this point. What essentially is happening here is that the psi, don't forget this symbol for water potential in the sieve tube element increases. Okay, this is why this unloading happens here. It increases. It becomes less negative. Okay? Once this unloading happens, the psi value is less negative. Now what's going to happen is that the sieve tube element, because it's less negative psi, will be now 
hypotonic. It turned from hyper to hypo because it dropped all of its solute into the sink. Now it has no more solute. Now it is hypotonic to the xylem. Because the xylem does have a little bit of solute, but just enough so that the xylem turns into the hypertonic thing, and the sieve tube element is now the hypotonic thing. What does this cause to happen? This causes H2O, and that H2O moves out of the sieve tube element because now we're hypo in the sieve tube, we're hyper in the xylem, we go hypo to hyper, moves out of STE for sieve tube element to xylem via osmosis. So we sort of switched roles here very, very quickly after the drop-off, after the unloading. And now, once we've done that, we eventually end up with a sieve tube element that is back to normal. Why is it back to quote-unquote normal? Well, that's because the sieve tube element in this state of being empty is ready to be reloaded. When will it be reloaded? Well, once it has dropped off its water into the xylem and it is now empty, it can be uh, utilize a leaf that makes sucrose that moves it into companion cell, uses active transport to load. How can it load if it's not unloaded? The unloading happens at the sink and it will be ready to be reloaded once it drops off the water into the xylem because of this hypohypertonic relationship. Overall, uh, look at figure 36.16. It'll really drive home this point. What I want you to understand is that a plant is not just specific sources and sink. It's actually a complicated mixture of sources and sinks that move sugar throughout the plant. Don't think of a plant as a static, some part is a source, some part is only a sink. It's a lot more complicated than that, as you've seen in many different mechanisms already. Overall, through this plant transport lecture, I hope you've understood the idea that plants utilize transport that great deal. They are not sitting and, and still and stagnant things. They are doing tons of things within them that are complicated and complex and that are worthy of appreciation. And I, hopefully you've gained that appreciation, of course, and I'll see you in the next lecture.